Hmm, let's check out what the acoustic room's got going on today. 20,000, 5,000, 3,000, 10, 150. <laughs> let's check this one out today. Welcome back, troglodytes, to Would You Rock or Not? Oh, it's always a joy to visit the acoustic room, because you never know what this guy's gonna get. We've talked about some of his other guitars in previous episodes, like this interesting J200, the Bella Voce art guitar, and he was also the second episode of Rock or Not with a techno pink hummingbird. But let's check this out. For $150,000, what are we getting here? We have the old pre-war Gibson logo, and then we've got a dragon here, and his scales are inlaid in mother of pearl and abalone inlay. Now, it must have took quite some time to figure out which piece would work best with each area, because you've got to get the different colors so it doesn't all just look the same, and you actually portray what you're going for. But if you zoom out just a little bit, you can also see that there's like flames on each side of the headstock right here, 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 and there. Pair that with that flamed maple veneer over the top of the headstock stock and it really is you know this really fiery dragon thing i'm not entirely too sure but it looks like that truss rod cover might just be straight up mother of pearl as well at first i was like what is this design y you gotta turn it this way then you can see it's another dragon now all of landon's guitars pretty much have a fancy headstock that's nothing new so let's move on to the fretboard Surprise, surprise, it's another dragon running up the entire ebony fretboard. Now, if we zoom in here, you can also see you've got the multiply binding around it. But I always find it funny when Gibson uses like real ebony for these types of fretboards that just get all carved up anyways. But for a $150,000 guitar, I wouldn't expect any less. So we can get some close shots here. You can see they did the very similar thing as they did on the headstock, the abalone mother of pearl combination. Now, personally, I'm not a big fan of abalone, but when it's used like this, I think it is absolutely stunning. It doesn't look like we have gold frets or anything though. And here you can see the dragon's breathing a little bit of fire. But now let's move on to the body here. All right, have a spruce top here with a relief carving of a dragon. So what that means for you is this is actually slightly popping out, similar to how they did the slash snake pit last Pauls. But this one, it's, it's a huge canvas. No wonder it's so expensive. This must have took so many man hours to do. For those of you keeping track, this is dragon number four. And this one has a really evil vibe to it. It's kind of different in style compared to the other ones. But in this photo, you can see the multiply binding along the outside of the guitar, as well as bound F holes. That's not something you see Gibson do all the time. Looking at this, I wonder how they did the bridge if they filed it down a little bit because it's sitting right on top of that relief carving right there. And our fifth dragon is on a shield for the Super 400 tailpiece. This one kind of looks just like the same one that's on the face of the headstock. And if we compare the two here, I would say they are the same. And if I had to guess, I would bet that's an ebony shield. But is that everything to this $150,000 guitar? If that was all this guitar was, I probably wouldn't have even bothered doing an episode on it. It's the back that really captivated me personally. It's got another relief carving. Now, there's something about this dragon. He just looks a little bit goofy, but friendly at the same time. But the back and sides of this instrument are made of flamed maple. So you get all this figuring on top of the relief carving. So I think this would be really interesting to see in person when the flame is moving. But again, very detailed carving here. A lot of guitarists, I don't think they truly appreciate how much man hours goes into creating something like this. But as cool as that dragon is, I, I wonder if it'd be kind of uncomfortable to actually play this one with a relief carving on the back. It would definitely have some sort of a textured vibe to it. But even our sixth dragon was not the reason why I wanted to feature this. It was simply the back of the neck. They scaled it. So not only can you feel all these dragons on the guitar, but it feels like you're playing a dragon. <laughs> I just thought that was kind of quirky. I know we've seen in like the Bella Voce episode where they did the intricate carvings towards the heel of the neck, which yeah, probably makes it hard to play in the upper registers, but it looks fancy. But this one, despite being all carved up, I bet it would still be semi-what comfortable to play. And this photo really kind of helps you see that they're stacked on top of each other too. It would be a very textured experience. 
And finally, the back of the headstock, it has the Clues and Seal Fast style tuners with the large tips on them. I'm not sure if those have a fancy name, but you've got the black stinger and then the custom emblem on the back. And just in case you missed it on the first pass here, the neck is actually made of maple as well. So on top of these dragon scales, you also have flame underneath it all. Wow. But clearly this is not meant to be played. It's a display piece for an emperor or a sultan or something, kind of similar to the Hermitage Stratocaster that we talked about before. And surely one day it will sell despite what anybody in the comments section thinks. Now, according to Landon over at the Acoustic Room, this is one of the most special guitars to come out of Gibson in recent history. The only other comparable model that he could think of was the 20th Century Tribute Super 400, which he says has commanded $600,000 offers, but word on the street is Gibson's looking for a million. But here is that guitar. It's basically, as the title suggests, a tribute to the 20th century. It's got a bunch of different things on it. The big ones that pop out to me are Les Paul, Mary Ford right up here. You've got Superman, looks like Chuck Berry, a guy coming home from the war. That's a pretty famous painting right there. You got the landing on the moon, Mount Rushmore, Marilyn Monroe, the Peanuts, Martin Luther King Jr. And then on the back, it's just a whole bunch of stuff from 1900 through 1990. If you're into historic things, this is definitely the guitar for you. Will they ever get the million dollars that they want? I don't know. But the price is clearly out of the stratosphere. But who is responsible for even making this guitar? Well, it's none other than Bruce Kunkel. Now, if you've been following my channel, I think you're going to already know who he is. It's funny that I mentioned the Snake Pit Les Paul because this right here is the guy who does all these relief carvings for Gibson. Now, I believe he used to actually work for Gibson, but now I think it's just for special pieces like this. And he also has his own custom guitar building service. You can follow him on Instagram as Nashville Custom Shop. Do you remember this one from Nam? Yep, that was him. Remember the Jimi Hendrix flying Vs? He's the guy that painted them. As you can see here, he is quite the talented luthier. Here's an interview with him. Hi, this is Bruce Kunkel, and this is my latest piece. I did this for Gibson Custom Shop um, for a customer. This has been two years in the making. It's all hand carved, Dragon Super 400. Relief carving on the top, very ornate. Fingerboard inlay that I designed. Dragon on the headstock with a curly maple head veneer. The back of the guitar is another big dragon. This thing's been dragging me down for a long time. We've got uh, scales on the back of the neck, dragon scales. And I'm really glad this is done. It's been one of the most difficult things I've ever had to do. And I hope you like it. And for our playing demo today, I couldn't think of a better person to do it. Mr. Bruce Kunkel himself. You know, people always say, yeah, it's pretty, but you can't play it. But I just want to show you this is a playable guitar. This is the Gibson Dragon Super 400. And, uh, The only question left, would you rock the Dragon 400 or not? Leave your answer down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Share the video with a friend who needs to see this. And we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. I want to take this time to thank Landon for sending me the video footage of this guitar. He takes great photography, but sometimes you really have to see these things in video to truly appreciate them. As always, you can follow the link in the description to visit his for sale page. And while this video was not sponsored, you can sponsor your own Wyvern episode on my website, troglysguitarshow.com.